Doc here from North America. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. It's Tuesday. Let's see what we got going on today. Let's see. We see a little firmness today, a little less paranoia, you know, about all the stupid things Washington is doing. We'll see. And you can see there <clears throat> the dollar is firming against the Swiss this morning a little bit right there. You can see it, uh, let's see, over in J4X. Where's that mouse at? Right there. You can see we're still doing a couple of reds, just like we have right there on uh, in Chicago. Only difference is, is that this has not turned up yet. The fast will move up soon. You can see it's down at the lowest end of its normal range. Uh, yeah. No, okay, so we have been a little bit lower at times, too. We'll see when this starts to turn. It should be turning in the next couple hours as long as the price stays in that area. And I guess, you know, buy the dollar, you know, king dollar again. You know, in many ways, all those words that we've used over the decades and decades and decades, you know, for a long time, don't have much value anymore. King dollar. You know, I mean, yeah. Uh, flight to safety. None of it has any real value to it. Uh, I guess the, the freakier part will be the day. It will be like 2008 all over again, somewhere along the line, or 2020 uh, in February and March of last year. You know, when it, uh, the markets just uh, you know, started to collapse, uh, you know, there's, there's obviously a day of reckoning somewhere along the line. You know, reality does seem to set in sooner or later. We're seeing giant margin calls at the moment throughout Europe and uh, the world in general uh, because of natural gas. Uh, you know, there's uh, 30 billion in margin calls at the moment. But what's 30 billion when the ECB plows in 60 billion euros a month and the Federal Reserve is plowing in 120 billion dollars a month and half of them are, are just going right to treasuries itself. You know, it sounds like the Federal Reserve is uh, buying half of every treasury bond that's being sold, or let's put it this way, for every two treasury bonds being sold, one is bought by the Fed. So, flight to safety, king dollar, all those things just don't seem to fit the reality. But, you know, in a, in a lifestyle of uh, headlines and, uh, you know, uh, bold statements or just statements in general that get reported and not necessarily the story itself, or the issues itself, then I guess it's kind of normal. I guess that's the best way to describe that. All right, uh, let's check the old chat line, see what's going on there. I see Douglas is in the house. Good morning, Douglas, or afternoon, or evening. Uh, you know, good to see you. It's nice to have somebody asking questions. We like that. You know, we find it important. Uh, and we just uh, are constantly hoping that you know we will remember without being reactive anymore and we're all proactive it it's nice to have conversation you know questioning what's going on how it's going on why it's going on you know so forth and so on so alrighty let's uh, let's finish off the uh, the Swiss against the dollar and uh, you know, I guess that's about all we can say about that it's just the dollar is a little bit firmer this morning uh, heading over to the Euro. It seems like it's playing with the bottom end of the range there, and it's a yellow candle, so it means it's down for the day. Um, you see it's still in the daily buy for two days here. We did a buy there yesterday. We still have a green dot there today, but in a down candle. And we'll throw that in there like so. Where do I see things disappear on this thing. Where is the cell? There's the cell right there. And you can see the weekly doesn't seem to be caring at all about any firmness in here or that range at the moment. You know, I guess maybe by the end of the week we might see some firmness in there and it starts to turn up. I can't see. Oh, sorry about that. Sorry about that. Right there. And uh, maybe we should try to move this around differently. Maybe maybe I can get both of these side by side somehow. Do that. Let's see if we can do that. Like that and that. This way it does show that. And then what we do is we take the fact check spreadsheet. 
What do we do with that? Can we change the dimensions of the... No, I don't cancel it. I want to move it. No, it doesn't do that well. I guess we can go like that with it. I guess put it underneath it. I guess that's like the way to, to do it. Something like that. Uh, something like that. And something like that. This way... I don't, I don't start rambling about a subject matter and it disappears, let's see. How about like that? There's the fact check spreadsheet. This way, nah, it's blocking that one. And it's blocking that one. Maybe that, right there, like that. There we go. Maybe that's the answer to the recipe here. There we are. Uh, just, just sort of says fact check. There we go. How's that? That seems to be better, doesn't it? All right, uh, so you can see here the, uh, Put it up on J4X. Right there, the Euro. There we go. You see it's down like that. And the Hanky will. Yeah, that's cool. Hanky's still red. I guess we had a, a green yesterday. That's it. That's what it is there. We had a green there. That's what it is. Okay. And you can see it's still turning up, just like it is here. And uh, let's see. What else can we say about all that? I guess not much more than that. I, I, I become, I think I'm becoming numb on some aspect, and at the same time I'm becoming very concerned. The fact that we we see, I guess the longer we we allow the financial system to be, I want to use the word fake, but I don't know if that's really descriptive enough. The financial system playing these absurd games, you know, quantitative easing for 12, 13 years, going to be another 13 years. And the discussion is not on the front page of the Bloomberg or the CNBC or the Reuters. Every day, it should be on the front page of it. But instead, they're, they're supporting the status quo. And that status quo is borrow from the future or destroy the existing system. I guess that's what it comes down to. It's, it's an odd thing there. As we take a sip here, I, I'm 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 becoming confused in how to describe the crazy that we live with every day. I, I think that's what it comes down to. I'm not sure how to describe this crazy anymore. You know, I, I started off the webinar saying, you know, the Federal Reserve is buying every other Treasury bill that's being issued. That's that's. That's phenomenal. I mean, that's that's beyond imagination. That's that's you know, how do you how do you reconcile that as a as, as someone involved in the financial markets? In other words, you're trying to intraday trade currencies or other products, and we have the Federal Reserve of the U.S. purchasing every other bond, and we have the ECB basically doing the same thing if not even more. I, I mean, that's real. We all know it's real. And I, I don't know how to reconcile that. In other words, how do we look at the markets besides... You can't look at the markets any other way but through technical analysis at this point because that removes the fundamentals. You know, that, that removes the fundamentals of, of what the markets have functioned on for hundreds and thousands of years, I guess. You know, in other words... Does something have value or it doesn't have value? So do U.S. Treasuries now being bought, every other one being bought by the Federal Reserve, does that mean that it's half the value that it should be? Should we interpret it that way? You know, I, 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 uh, I digress. You know, all I guess, I guess I can do as what I've been doing for 40 some odd years is using the uh, quantitative analysis to decide the direction of a product. I guess that's where we have to leave it at. And and no wonder, in some ways, why Reuters or Bloomberg or CNBC or these other financial networks, or even the Wall Street Journal, you know, you know, Investors Business Daily, you know, they're not talking about it every day because they don't know how to do, to deal with it. You know, how can they how can they describe that any simpler than that? Every other Treasury issuance is being bought by the Federal Reserve. That alone 
is the abyss. <laughs> that is, that's the freak out right there alone. So I guess in, in some ways, ignoring it makes it feel better, I guess. I don't, know. I don't. it drives me crazy every day. But anyway, as you can see here, the Euro through quantitative analysis, and obviously not fundamental, is just kind of cruising along the bottom end of the range now. And, uh, you know, we, we have this, uh, I guess this little debate or conversation going on about inflation now. You know, uh, uh, <laughs> inflation actually is a fundamental concept, right? So, I mean, how does that fit into the story? That one, we'd, we'd all be sliding straight jackets onto ourselves at this point. All right, uh, cable. Let's just go over to the cable. You see the same thing with the cable. There's a little strength there again this morning from, now that's interesting. Cable is lifting still. It's still being bought, whereas the Swiss and the Euro is heading down. The cable is gaining against the dollar. Uh, we're in a second week of selling in there, and uh, obviously we're, in, we're also locked into a trap in the sense that it's telling us not to be short. So we know that the overall weakness is in the, the cable at the moment, but the last two days is telling us, uh, no, don't, don't get fooled by that. So. You know, again, fundam fundamental versus quantitative, and uh, you know, we just uh, have to sit here and just watch it, grin and bear with it, you know, that type of thing. Let's take a look at it over on J4X, just confirming the way that J4X, uh, this particular system that we have developed for the J4X, you know, the slow and fast moving stochastic, which is the two lines below here. And then looking at the hinkies that kind of correlate to our dots is that, you know, when you're taking an average of the open, high, low, and close, and then dividing it, you're, you're basically looking at it on a spatial way. And that's why, you know, it matches up to a certain extent with uh, my dots. You know, it does a pretty good job. It. So, you know, it's just, uh, it's amazing. You know, I, I remember seeing this one movie uh, where, uh, I think it was Pacino, was playing a head coach to a fictionary NFL team called the Sharks. It was supposedly like down in Miami. And, uh, and basically he gave a pep talk in the locker room. I figure I'd mention this since I think the NFL is playing at Wimbledon uh, this Sunday coming up at uh, 9.30 Eastern AM in the morning. I think it's uh, like the New York Jets is playing the Atlanta Falcons, I think it is there. And so, you know, co coaches usually will try to give you a pep talk. And I guess you could say in some way, you know, analysts to the markets are trying to give you a pep talk. And you start to talk about some of the, you can't fool these p people. You know, I mean, they're out there on the, the battlefield of football and getting banged up. So, I mean, you have to talk about reality. It's got to be, you know, something that can, everybody can relate to. And he talks about one step you know, just one second off more than another. And I think that's the way I, I look at uh, that, the, you know, the, the uh, technical analysis we do with J4X compared to the technical analysis or quant technologists, tech, technolis, tech, technical analyzation of uh, Chicago Quant, my uh, algorithm, you know. And, and something could be, as much as you think that it's close, it's still like one half of a step, you know, just, just a, a tenth of a second less. And just that alone can mean a lot. And that's, that's what that analogy was all about in that uh, football movie with Al Pacino and, uh, and uh, oh, there's an actor I really like. He's a comedian who's done some really great uh, serious roles. Uh, I can't think of his name now. Lucky I remembered Al Pacino's name, um, and so uh, that is that's what, what we see here. We see that the the J4X, as good as it is, and better than any of the public indicators of technical analysis, the combination we put on there is a step ahead, and just happens that Chicago Quant is a step ahead of that, and that's all. That's that's what it all comes down to. Yeah. All right, uh, cable is moving up uh, against the dollar, and uh, euro and Swiss are moving down against the dollar. Hmm. Curious, you know, it is a curious thing. 
Uh, let's jump over to, let's just take a look at that in the, uh, the sense of look at the euro against the GBP. We don't normally look at that, but today I think we will. And you can see here, it's going down against the, the uh, British pound. You know, it's reflecting it very clearly. You can see it's trying to roll over here into the weekly. Um, we run a, a, a 3 5 on this right there. Oh, you can't see that. Uh, let's see. So we run a 3.5 on it, right there. And so we need all three of these to correlate, the bluish dashed, the green line, and the histogram to move it, you know, like how when all three were into the plus. And you can see it's flirting, bang, and back and forth, but not going into the weekly cell. Uh, you know, here, this we, if we were just running the three. All right. Um, what else can there be said about that? I hope I'm making some sense this morning. It might be a little too serious. You know, I try to be chill. You know, I try not to drive anybody too crazy. But the objective is is to, to make money, and that's you know. And the one thing I wouldn't want, and Janos had done a couple of videos about it, and that is how to trade the fundamentals and how you can't trade them anymore because the fundamentals have a really short half life. You know, they don't really survive long. Uh, they make their move and it's done and over with in a matter of seconds. Whereas, you know, before quantitative easing, fundamentals could drag on for a couple of days. When a, when a fundamental said something, it lasted for a day or two. You know, it actually had a carried the rhythm of the, the product traded. Now, fundamentals, uh, you know, fundamental uh, information, in other words, uh, uh, analysis, you know, uh, inflation, interest rates, volatility, you know, all those magical things. C, C, uh, CPI, you know, consumer price, uh, you know, uh, uh, and all those other things, PPI, and employment, you know, those fundamentals now don't have much of an effect on, on the marketplace more than in a, literally in a matter of a minute or two, and then it seems to disappear. Like as if, okay, we heard it, now we don't care anymore. So it just tells you how much the QE really influences all the fundamentals now of uh, financial analysis. Alrighty, uh, where we go from here? I guess uh, we t go back up and take a look at uh, Turkish lira, and see it's banging against our, you know, little dotted line thing that's been sitting there for six months. And I guess that was we used the headline yesterday for this. We said uh, <coughs> I forget what we said. We said something about the uh, the world being you know trapped in a range. You know the currencies and everything is trapped in some type of artificial range at the moment. And that, and that could go on. It's been, been that way for a while now, but it could go on for years. As long as there's quantitative easing, <clears throat> there's going to be a range that's going to be, you know, consistent because it's one of the only ways they can really measure something in, in value is keeping them in their ranges. You know, this way they control the inflation, the costs, and so forth. And I guess like a Turkish lira is a little out of the norm. You know, it, you know, one moment it's one and a half, and over a eight or nine or seven year period. As a matter of fact, why don't we throw that up on the J4X? How long has the Turkish lira, you know, been on this roller coaster ride? And let's go put it up on there. We're going to throw a weekly up there of it, and you know, it, you'll see it's a, really a short, long, short lived, uh, you know, time period. We'll go with the monthlies. So you can see there, you know, back in 2000, literally 2018, product was trading in the threes. So you're talking four years, four years, yeah, the three years, three years, this thing has gone tripled in value. And you can see, this is the Aragon era. Where uh, you know he, he becomes prime minister and he's basically taking his product from the ones and twos all the way up to the eights, you know. Um, that's a phenomenal thing because most of these other products don't do that. So wow, what is the malfunction there? You know, I mean, in the sense of 
compared to you know some of the other products, we have not seen double and triple in values, quadruple in values in too many products. But this one has really you know just you know it really freaked everything out. That's what's interesting about watching it is that there are not that many currencies out there jumping around like that. So all right, uh, let's get back to the daily there. Just to make the point of uh, why the, the central banks try to keep these things in a nice tight range, you know, for a while because of inflation. That's a number that used to be very important. Inflation. Now you can see here they've taken out the high here. It's kind of stalling, and uh, you know our, our range. You can see the range right here. You know it's been banging up against it again now. So uh, you know it's a unique thing there. And I guess you know today we literally could say. Fundamentals versus quantitative analysis. That could literally be the title of this today since I've been rambling about it for the first half hour. And, you know, I got freaked out by, you know, looking at the numbers again this morning and seeing that the Federal Reserve buys one out of every two issuances. Wow. You know, that's, that's, that's a blow your mind type of moment when you think about it in a serious way. I try, obviously, I try not to be too crazy about it. Um, so then what we do is we jump over to the euro against the, um, the euro against the Turkish lira, which to me I think is location, location, location. And that is that it, it has a nice nature to it to uh, be a much more accurate. You know, I think it gives us a better d direction, technically, because, you know, it's probably being used more. And you can see here, it has not taken out the top of that range, whereas on the dollar, you know, it's way up in here which obviously represents the strength of the dollar more than anything else. But what makes the dollar strong is that money is going to it, not away from it. For some reason, they feel it's a safe place to be. I mean, the Chinese would not keep a trillion dollars worth of bonds in American bonds if they didn't think it was a safe place to put money. The Japanese would not put a trillion dollars worth of bonds if it wasn't a safe place to and I believe the European Cent European Central Bank uh, or the European Union has uh, about something like 450 billion, something like that, in treasury bonds. So it seems to be the place to be at the moment. <laughs> and it's a, it's, a, it's a definitely weird situation, you know, taking the fundamentals and throwing them out the door. And uh, you know, it does make it a little stranger. But I guess that's all part of the channels of the currencies. That's what it's all about. That's why we see these things in their channels, their envelopes. You know, it stays in a range. The objective is to keep these things in their range so that they can control the inflation. Uh, and now that we have inflation kicking up even more aggressively here in the States, it's getting a little bit freakier. You know, it's definitely getting a little bit freakier. Normally, the dollar would be down over all this. You know, we should see the dollar down a lot more, but we don't, which is very curious. You know, let's put the dollar ETF up there. And there it is today. The dollar ETF is trying to climb up. And uh, there's the dollar. You know, and what has it been doing overall? It looks like it's been on a climb on the upside there. You know, it, it, it ebbs and flows. It has its range also. And uh, that's all the way back to March of this year. And you can see all the way back to July of 2020. You know, it was even higher during the calamity of the uh, coronavirus situation there. And the hedge funds with the uh, volatility funds getting totally whacked. And that's what we're seeing in the, uh, uh, the energy sector now. Let's go over to Canadian. That's what we do. And then from there, since this is flat, we assume that, you know, like crude oil and so forth are up or, you know, gold is up or something of that nature. And you can see here, uh, you know, the, uh, the Canadian is in a weekly buy, but it's been in the daily sell for a couple of days here. So it's trapped in that neutral situation where you can't be long or short. Unless you're providing a as a service to somebody, you know, then you, then you have to get involved in it, and then this will give you the short-term insight more than anything else, but in the end result is that this reflects that when we go over to the uh, 
metals complex and the energy complex. What we have right now is a, um, a, a margin call going on in, uh, in, as I started this webinar off, there's a margin call going on in natural gas. Natural gas has exploded five-fold or six-fold to the U.S. gas, which is usually a normal spread. So the spread now is something like 30 to 6, where it's normally like, you know, 6 to 7 or 5 to 6. You know, it's not that far off from each other, but it's, and there's a $30 billion, that's where I mentioned earlier, a $30 billion margin call out there going on. And that's why there's been weakness in these stock markets because they need to liquidate to get cash. You know, that's you get thirty billion. But you know, what what is it really when you think about it, what is it how hard is it really for the Federal Reserve to help out everybody? Not much. Since they're already helping the US Treasury out by buying half of its bonds, uh, then you know, obviously they're not gonna let natural gas have that much of an influence on the world markets. Remember, the whole attitude of it all is really is to keep the status quo. You know, they don't want, you know, this is what Mr. Bernanke's uh, PhD thesis was about what could have been done in the 1929 crash that would have uh, straightened out uh, the economy. In this case here, you know, in the 1929 crash, they froze the U.S. 30-year uh, 30, 30 bond into the you know into a range from two and three quarters to like three and a half or something like that, or three to three and a half. They kept it in a range for over 30 some odd, uh, 40 some odd years, something like that, all the way up till Richard Nixon. So, you know, here we are in just the first 13 years of the quantitative easing, which was pretty much the same thing the Federal Reserve did back then. But he, he. Uh, he basically wrote his paper talking about how it devastated society and changed the culture. And I guess, you know, the objective is not to change the culture or devastate the society. At least here in the States. Uh, you know, I mean, uh, you know, I'm not living outside the United States, so I don't really see the pressures or lack of pressures, you know. It, the objective is to keep those wheelbarrows of money out of the, the street so that you can buy a loaf of bread for a fair value or at least a, a low, low normal value. Whereas the, all the, the cartoons of that era show you, show people w using wheelbarrows of currency to buy uh, something as simple as a loaf of bread. So, um, there's a, makes me think about physics and the weight of things and the masses of it, but that's besides the point. So, here we are, and here is, uh, There is the natural gas. And so in the States, you know, we're looking at natural gas in the sixes. And I think I can go find it. Um, I saw a chart on it yesterday. The natural gas in, in Europe is at $30. So it's not at $7. You know, it's trading there at six oh five. You know, normally that means that in Europe it should be like seven oh five or or five and a half or something like that. And it's trading at thirty dollars instead. That's why there's a thirty billion dollar margin call out there for uh, a dozen or half a dozen brokerage houses right now and they're pushing their clients to put capital into their uh, into the situation there. Uh, I imagine some some of you out there have to be seeing that and I would hope that you would chime in on the webinar here to give us a, a personal confirmation about the reality of it all you know um, I'm trying to find the story. So your trade deficit hits record high. Ah, okay. U.S. trade deficit hits record high. Wow. Let's see. trying to find that story. I want to show it to you. Is it, it does have, you know, it's a, it is amazing, the, uh, the, the numbers. Let's see. Is energy shortage worsen? Energy shortage. Futures rebound as energy prices soar. Mm -hmm. 
I should have saved that article. Yes, I think I posted it. Uh, but let me see if I can find it. And it had the chart, and it showed that uh, European natural gas is up to thirty dollars a cubic foot or something like that. That's that's an incredible number. And that's why the big uh, uh, world's largest commodity trader is margin call. Okay, there we go. All right. Well, I'm going to shift you back for a second to the uh, what is that? That's the CAD. And let me see if I can f put this article up there. I want to show you is the chart because I find it to be astonishing. You know. it in now and I'm going to move it up onto the screen and, and and that's probably some of the noise that we're seeing that we're not really talking about it is amazing how much we we see these things occur like that okay and we're loading still loading this in and we'll show you that chart Scroll down to there, and then I hit next again. And I'm almost there, and we'll have this up on the screen. Uh, let's see, there it is. World's largest commodity traders face massive margin calls as global natural gas arb explodes. And then let's see if we can put, there's the chart. So they have it now at 33.75. Uh, that's a pretty demonstrative number there. Um, let's see. What else is there brewing? So that's what's got my eye also at the same time. There's so many different crossing patterns, you know, from the song. You know, when you allow money to be irresponsible, it will. <laughs> That's pretty much what it comes down to. When you allow money to be irresponsible, it definitely will. <laughs> and and that's the that's the problem with quantitative easing is that the ones who created the problem were being rewarded, not removed from the overall factor. And that's what the problem is. Not just this particular thing. Mid price, 33.7, that's natural gas in the Netherlands. Yowzer. Anybody in the Netherlands out there? Is that a real, is that, that's real, right? Right, right, right. Is that real? And uh, if anybody can confirm that they've seen their gas bill jump a little bit, let me know. And so that's where we are. And you can see here in the States, let me change that over again long mouse right there and there's natural gas so let's take a look since we looked at Canadian it was unchanged and it's probably stunned on what's going on to begin with let's take a look at the there's a Canadian real quick on the uh, J4X yeah, it's just kind of like you know no 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 direction whatsoever at this point it's just stunned and th so then what we do is we take a look at uh, um, take a look at crude oil. We've seen natural gas there trading at the highs. So, you know, it's like a seven-year or eight-year high, something like that, nine-year high. And like I said, what's thirty billion dollars to the Federal Reserve? It's not much. You know, it's, it's just pocket change. So let's take a look at natural gas. Uh, not natural gas. Let's check out uh, crude oil. And it's still firm, also. It's at like a six month high or two year, I don't know, something like that. 78.88 trading at right there. We've been in the weekly buy since the, the low, uh, the mid 60s, high 60s, right there. And we're $10 higher now, uh, just over the last four weeks. And then uh, we go over to gold. There's gold. Now they're pushing it down again, but still holding up in this daily buy, but we're in the weekly sell. Again, when the world is going to, as they used to say, hell in a handbasket, normally gold was being bought like as if it was king dollar. But now king dollar is bought like it's gold. It's, it's very weird. 
And then we take a look at silver there. Just a real quick look at silver. You see it's kind of flirting. We, we talked about this yesterday, how it's been in a daily buy for three days, but it's been in a weekly sell for 21 weeks. This is going on the, the 20, the 20, uh, second week now. So, all right, uh, what else can we say about that? I guess not much. We're going to go back over to the currencies again, and we'll check out the uh, South African Rand, which you would think that product would be roaring down, you know, because it's got a lot of gold, you know. And, uh, but not, you know, it's been high and it's fighting with the weekly buy. You can see right there, went into the weekly buy last week. Uh, we did slide into a daily sell for the last couple of days, but it hasn't been any good. And luckily, since we're in a weekly buy, no trader out there would be trapped in it unless they were in some type of binary or something with a limited risk factor. And so that's where we stand now with uh, the South African Rand. Let's see what it looks like here. And, uh, oh, Douglas says, oil is beautiful. <laughs> beautiful. And S&P's, let's see, S&P ETF and WZ, please. Okay, sure. Uh, Douglas, are you seeing natural gas where you are? Is that up high? Is that, uh, you know, I'm curious about that. Let's find Douglas uh, the product that he's looking for. Let's go with uh, what's that? The, let's check out the EWZ. Oh, wait, look, we can do this. Let's do this first. We can do the S and P 500 very easily because it's right here. And there's the S and P 500. Uh, it is trying to lift up. You can see right there. Uh, weekly is pressing down on it. Uh, I would imagine there'll be some type of recoil after it's sliding the way it's been sliding. It's gone from 4,500 down to 4,300 with a low of 4,269. So uh, I would imagine, you know, they'll try to do some bouncing in there. Uh, matter of fact, what we can do is take you over to the short term just to give you a little flavor of the action in it. And there it is right there since you asked. Uh, there it is, yeah, you can see, so the high of the day, nah, you're only talking about six points, you know, 314 there, change the high is what, uh, 314.75 right there. Uh, they, since the news came out of uh, the trade deficit, which is right here, that's, that's when the news came out, right there. They popped it for a short period of time, and then now they're dropping it down. You can see the pressure on it. You can see it's in the minus here, since so there. Went into the plus for here. A lot of noise though. You can see that. Lots of noise. You know, some no no dots at all on some of these. But it's been it was in the buy for this move up to here. Went into a sell there. Went back into a buy for that spike, and then went into the sell right there or there. Let's widen that a little bit so you can see better. So I went into the sell right there. Again, right there, let me see. Yeah, right there. So this created the cell, and then it's really glided down since then. So that's the S&Ps, okay. And then let's take a look at uh, EWZ. Where should we put that? Let's, put the, let's go back down to this. Uh, which mouse is that? This mouse there. And then uh, you can see a lot of them are feeling pressure now since the news came out. And let's go and take a look at EWZ. Uh, open it up. There it is. Open Sesame. There it comes. Yeah. From yesterday, it's still in there. That's cool. As you can see here, uh, you know, it's back down to where it went into the cell. 
so it's never gotten into the buy, and it's you know rolling over there. I guess I can get rid of that. Um, and it's been in a weekly sell in many ways. Uh, let's see, it's been in a weekly sell since July, since the 42 ish sharing or 40 ish sharing or something like that. Is that 40, 40, 70 that week? What was the high of that week? Is that Monday? Okay, it's right there. So it was in the 41 ish area to start the week off. Closed in a weekly sell. We're not sure which number it was at the time. Right now, I guess we could go back and investigate it. But the end result is you can see here how it was piercing it for a couple days before the end. So maybe Wednesday. So low mid 40s all the way down to now a low of 31.72. Almost a 10-point drop, which is like, you know, for a $40 stock, that's a 25% retracement. I see Douglas says, yesterday dropped 2,500 points. Was that EWZ? Yeah, that's a lot of push on the downside there. All right. Um... I hope that has satisfied you. What's what's twenty five hundred points? You know, I mean, we can see over just last since Friday's close at uh, thirty two thirty three oh eight. Now it's trading below thirty one ninety. Well, it got down to thirty one ninety one. Is that what that? EWZ, yeah. Oh, that's a Brazilian one too, right? Is that what that is? The Brazilian. Which is astonishing, you know. It really is a good trading product. Lost 25%. Big number. All right. That's that. Um, what else do we see here? I just noticed that the stock indices are still feeling a little pressure from the news. Nothing major. They count... They count in a different way. Yours, 25%, is 2,500 points there. And that, that must be a lot, right? I mean, what's what's the what's the value? I mean, what is the real tra trading at? We can't seem to get a chart on the real, real the, the Brazilian real. It really drives me crazy. I don't understand that. I mean, it's a large economy. I don't understand how their currency is not you know, being used by anybody. I, I don't understand that. <laughs> Maybe they use the dollar. You know, is that what that might be? You know how some of those South American countries actually have the dollar as the official product? Like, just like, like Hong Kong had the dollar as a fixed currency to their, they fix their currency to the dollar. I think Panama uses the dollar. You know, it's things like that. I mean, it's odd. All right, uh, so that's where we are on the on that. Let me just jump over to the currencies again, but I'm willing to change subject instantly if you see something. So now let's take a look at the ruble right there. And the ruble is uh, sideways down. You know, it's still in that weekly sell now for a bunch of weeks since... Uh, well, it's not really gone anywhere. I mean, it's down lower, but not that lower. It's been in a weekly sell since August, in the middle of August. Yeah, Doug says, right now it is 110.55. So I guess, what was it? Was it 113 and change? Is that what it was at one point? 113? So it's not, you know, like a... 25% drop. It's a. Uh, oh, what is it? What's that? One point? Let me look at that closer. So it's 110. Right, so was it 113 and change? Is that what you're saying? As we look at the ruble through the J4X, too, let's do that. Thousands. Yeah, one. What was the number before it dropped 2,500 points? 2,500 points. 
You mean 2.5, really, right? So in other words, you know, you add 2.5 to 110.55, and you got 113.05. Was it 113.05? which makes it like less than a 1% move on the downside there. So you can see here the ruble. Thing, feeling pressure, you can see it here on J4X too at the same time. Thousands. What do you mean by thousands? It was, okay, so it was 113.05. Zero. 050? Yeah, 050. Okay. So it's less than a 1% drop. Now, but, uh, oh, I, I mean, yesterday. But how about, where was it in the middle of, let's go back to that. Let's go back to it real quick. Where was it trading in July? Can you, do you know where it was trading in July? So in other words, was it trading at, say, uh, 1, 1, uh, 25 or, 130 or something like that, One point, uh, 130.000, maybe something like that. Where was it in uh, the middle of, at the beginning of July? Or the end of June? No, I guess it was, it's the end of July. Is it on? Yeah, no. That's June, right? Yeah, that's July. So where was it at that point? back in here. And I'm going to just jump back to the, the ruble for a second, just to keep on marching along, to keep this moving. And then there's yen. You see yen is trying to pop back up again after a couple days on a sell, but it's in a weekly buy, so you couldn't take the short. But you can take the long right there if it closes there today. All right. There we go over to the Mexican peso. I just want to see what it's doing on J4X real quick. Yeah. Interesting. Very interesting. See here, um, you know, the end showing all that weakness there, just like we're, oh, that's not it, it's fine, but the end again. There you go, the red dots, just like the hinkies there, see them, they're both doing it at the same time. And you can see this has turned up here, and I'm sure that J4X in a few hours will start to turn up. Yeah, okay, so I was, I was guessing fairly well, so that's, that's like a 15% drop, not a 25% drop, right? So 1st of July, it was at uh, 125.66. And so uh, maybe it was the week before, it was like in the 127 one, uh, maybe, or one, you know, something like that. And now it's trading at uh, 110. So what is that? That's like a 5% uh, a drop, something like that. 6% drop, let's see, 10%. Yeah, it's a 10% drop. So better than a 10% drop. Okay, whereas the ETF is almost a 25% drop. Interesting. Okay. Thank you for the insight, Douglas. I appreciate that. All right. Uh, nothing better than getting data from, you know, on the ground, you know, real stuff. You know how they always say the old saying about where the tire meets the road? know, actual, actual, you know, experience from the event itself. All right, so what's that, like a 13% drop? I guess that's what it is. Uh, it's like a 13% drop, 12% something, yeah, 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 exactly, 12.12 .12 down, doc. yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, so it's half of what the, e the ETF did. Might, that might re reflect how much, uh, hunger there is to be able to get a position on in that area. All right, now, uh, from there, we look at the peso. Let's go to the peso. Right there. Uh, still lifting up. 
Okay. Right there. That's why it's got that third big oval going on. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's rugged, you know, definitely rugged. I'm figuring because of the way it showed on the chart that the week before, uh, what'd you say, the first of July, and uh, we went into the weekly sell itself on the the second of July. You know, in other words, it was the close of that week, and the high of that week was 42. Let me show you what I'm looking at here. Right there. So you can see here, it closes in that in that week on the second. That's the end of the week, and then we have a Monday off. But that week, when it pushed itself into that, I guess that's the Monday of the beginning of it. It was trading at 41.33, but settled by the end of the week at uh, was as low as 39.45, sold it at 40. So I'm assuming that. More than likely, the week before that, it was probably in the 127s or 128s. Could have been as high even as 130. That's where my head is at there. Which makes it even more of uh, more than 12.12, you know? This makes it 14 something, maybe 15, something like that, maybe. I don't know. Either way, we're, we're uh, being too, too technical there. 12.12 is fine with me. That's a, and that just shows over half the value of the drop, you know, with the ETF. Uh, still, still hurts no matter what. If you're long it, it's an ouch. If you're short it, it's a yay. All right, uh, so now uh, the Mexican peso, right there you can see, seems to be flirting up in here. We'll see how long it holds up like it did here. Uh, here it got up there and started to roll over. You can see here the weekly's kicking in. That, and look at this. Vacillation has been going on almost every other week. Only one week, uh, two weeks out of what? Um, is that one there too? Yeah, so three weeks, right? No, wait. So one week there, one week there, and one week there. Out of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Out of the last twelve weeks, it's switched nine times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine times it's switched. <laughs> so it just shows you how the uh, the peso is going through something now too at the same time. We're seeing some issues there. Now this is definitely seeing a lot of interesting things kick out, that's for sure. You know, again, it's, you know, we're in a strange era so there's not much more to be said about that. And so that's where we are when it comes to looking at these things here. That's where we usually stop. We stop at the Mexican peso. Yeah, we do those four. South African Rand, Ruble, Yen, and Peso. Okay. So now what we'll do is we'll drift back over to the, to, to the uh, commodity side, take a look at, we saw silver this morning. You know, silver's doing that little dance. It just refuses to, uh, uh, you know, get going. Just can't, they just cannot get silver going. And gold, you can see right here, you know, you know, having its pressures, trying to get back into a cell, maybe join the weekly. Um, and then there's silver right there. Same situation. And I guess we should switch to platinum now from, uh, I think it's, I think the next front month in platinum is something like uh, February or something like that. Or January. It must be January. But let's just take a quick look at platinum. There's the October contract. And you can see here, uh, you know, it's in a daily, trying to go into a daily buy again today. Is that right? Yeah. No, they're not even reflecting to yes to, uh, today. Let me just give it a refresh. There we are. 
may have ended. So it went into a buy here after 21 weeks and then fell down. That's why I thought I'd mention silver yesterday. Solely because, you know, platinum had found a way to get into a buy for one whole week. And platinum went up $100. And that could be delivery situations. We don't even know that. You know, we, know, we don't really pay attention to platinum that closely. Uh, more than just look, watch the future spread between that and gold. Gold, gold is what, 17 and change? Let's go back to gold real quick. So uh, gold, you know, we're looking at 17.50 versus, uh, where is it at? Uh, 19.60, 17.60, so that's like $800 or 700 some odd dollars. So just a, just a reminder of it all. Alrighty, uh, I guess that's about it, isn't it? I think we're going to call it quits. Uh, everybody have a safe and smart trading day. And we will catch you all tomorrow on Happy to Hump Day. So, happy trails to you. Until we meet again. Jan, yeah, that's what I thought. Jan, Jan Platinum. It's always that off angle. It's the deck... Uh, deck deck and uh, deck silver and gold and uh, and then Jan Platinum. Happy trails to you, to all our trading friends. Alright traders, we will catch you all tomorrow. Same time, same channel. Ta-ta for now.